Oh, I also need to accept. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so thank you. That is all the housekeeping. I'm going to turn it over to Sergio. He can introduce himself a little bit more and I'm excited for this presentation. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Cindy and everyone else. We really appreciate this opportunity and thank you everyone to, uh, that joined us today. We're gonna be touching base on one of the, the most common frauds that are becoming more and more prevalent these days. And hopefully we can uh, provide you with, uh, with some information to prevent any more damage. So a little bit about what we're touching base on today, who we are as BBB, why am I talking here with you today? The impact of scams, Roman scams, red flags, other common frauds, how to avoid to fall prey to a scam, and what to do if you have already been a victim of a scam. So with no further ado, let's get to it. First, a little bit about the BBB. We were funded back in 1912 by business owners. We started as an advertising review agency. Today, we have 112 BBBs across North America. We cover all US, most of Canada, and now we even have offices in Mexico. I keep on pushing for the next expansion to be in Jamaica. Hopefully they listen to me. Crossing my fingers, I'll be volunteering for sure. 250 million services, um, instances of service is how many uh, people come to us within that network. So we help a lot of people within that institution. Now, a little bit about us, our mission and vision. We're uh, here to create a marketplace where buyers and sellers can trust each other. And we wanna be the leaders of that. So we're also a self-regulatory agency for business by business. And of course, uh, you probably have seen us before where you can go to our website to get to know more about a business before you engage with them. So we, uh, we invite you anytime that you have any question about uh, before signing with any uh, service provider or any product that you may have, go to our website and take a quick peek. Now, we also offer other services such as, such as unbiased third-party services like uh, reviews, complaints, mediation, and arbitration. And of course, our community engagement programs such as this one. So we're really excited to be with you today. Now, let's get into the topic. Scams by the numbers. According to the last uh, stats by the Canadian Anti-Fraud Center, as of January 31st, 2022, there were 5,569 reports of fraud that were uh, totaling $34 million. So this is real people that are losing real money and a lot of money. Now, talking about COVID, as you know, these scammers are always using the new uh, topic or theme or anything that's happening in the world to their advantage. And COVID was no exception. Just with COVID, that added another almost $8 million. So we have to have our eyes open. Now, within the BBB, we also have some reports that we produce so that we can communicate to our consumers and what to be looking um, into. For example, we realize that cryptocurrency is one of those scams that are actually uh, going up. So be, uh, make sure that whenever you're dealing with anything like that, you do your due diligence before you fall prey. Um, it's, it's very unfortunate. The median loss for each uh, person that has actually fall prey to this is around $250. So we tend to think that these scammers are trying to get a lot of money. Well, some are, some are, some, some are not. Some are looking for volume. So if I can get 20,000 that fall prey for a $200 scam, I'm still on my way to, to, to do what I want, right? It's still profitable. Now, one thing that has changed through the years is how are we being targeted? Uh, we use, we're probably all used to that email from that Nigerian prince who really wants to give up his fortune. And the only thing stopping him is our information and a small pay, right? He just wants you know, the delivery pay. Well, I know we're all accustomed to it, but it has changed, right? Then it developed into phone, uh, phone calls, uh, text messages now, and more and more social media. So these numbers that are uh, placed by the government of the U.S. can show us how this has increased in the past couple of years. It's just crazy. So many people being contacted through social media because now that's where we live and we're more accustomed to it. Now, I have a couple of questions to share with you before we move forward. I have a poll here, Cindy, if you don't mind to um, you know, bring the first one up. I want to know about you. 
I want to know if you have been contacted recently uh, in the last 12 months uh, for, by a scammer. Just make sure that you select your choice and then we're going to discuss that. Two more seconds to answer the poll before I end it. Hundred percent. That's crazy. Usually we have a, a percentage that is around 85, 90%, but everybody has been touched uh, by a scammer in the last 12 months. That's that's a lot. And then it really speaks to what we're looking into today. Um, these scammers are are just keeners. They're eager to try to get your money one way or the other. And um, we have a second scam, I mean a second poll here about scammers. Please uh, answer the second question. How, did, how were you connected? Was it by email? Was it a phone call? Was it in person? Was it social media or any other? Maybe a couple more seconds there. There we go. So phone call steals king, 53%, then email and social media 7% and mail 7% and other. Hmm, I like to know what that other. So perfect, yeah, there's a lot of people that have been contacted. And as we were talking, the way that they're trying to connect with us, it has spread. It's not just a regular. Now, do we see a comment here in chat? Let's see. Okay, no, we're all good. Perfect. So does anyone have a story they want to share with us uh, that, about this recent connection with the scammer? If not, don't worry. I'll share one for, for my wife that just happened recently. So she she's on social media, of course, right? So one of these days, one of her friends, uh, she realized that she changed all her postings and she started posting about all this incredible revenue that she was getting from this new investment that she made, of course, with cryptocurrency. She was making $10,000 every day and she did this over a period of a couple of weeks. Every day she was posting of how much money she was making, right? And my wife was like, that's so weird. Like I know her and she wouldn't even know how to invest, but she's making that much money. Well, good for her, right? And then all of a sudden she contacted her to get her involved with that uh, cryptocurrency. And she's like, mm, that's very funky. No, I don't think it's her. So I'm gonna call her to make sure that she's fine. And sure enough, when she called her, she realized that she had been hacked. This person had nothing to do with her and she was just trying to get more people into buying that cryptocurrency. So watch out, these scammers can get even, they can even portray uh, one of your best friends. So make sure that before you engage, you know who you're talking to. So that's for that. Let's move into what we are here to discuss today. The scams related to romance, right? So first of all, love. Why is love so important? Well, love is part of a human existence, right? We are social creatures by nature. We need to express ourselves that way. We need to have um, some kind of like um, network to help each other feel better. Um, everybody's different. Some people might need more people. Some people might need less people. But at the end of the day, we still create that connection. That's why whenever we fail in love, we continue trying. And we're also very positive as a, as a race, right? Like uh, as a human race. We all want to think that the best is about to come. And if one fails, you know, the next one will be better. We're always looking for a happy ever after. And of course, we try to find love in traditional places. Um, it could be maybe at school, maybe at work, or maybe in any other place that you enjoy spending time with. However, um, as you know, our lives have changed so much in the, in the last few years, where we used to find love a lot easier, where maybe we were introduced by a friend or in some other place. Now in these days, we're so fast paced that sometimes we don't even have time to be in that real world. So how do we find love these days? 
we can do it in both ways. We still have the real world, but we also have the assistance of the digital world. Now, whenever we're in that digital world, that poses a completely different experience and it poses different challenges. Not that one is better than the other, but they both have challenges that we have to be aware of. So speaking to the challenges that we're gonna encounter online, we might be thinking that, you know what? challenges. What are you talking about, Sergio? No, I know everything. I know how to take care of myself. This never happened. This can never happen to me. Well, guess what? That false sense of security is what these people, these scammers are preying on. They know that people for the most part feel okay, feel safe when they're using their computers, when they're using their social media. But one thing that we're going to be talking about during this conversation is that these guys are professionals. Never forget about that. These guys have techniques, they have marketing studies, even psychology studies that will actually prey on our hopes and needs. So if you feel that this cannot happen to you, think twice. We can all be prey. All they need is that you're not paying attention for you know, a few minutes and that's where they get you. Now, you might be thinking again, how could they get me, right? I'm doing my due diligence. Well, yes and no. I don't know if any one of you had the chance to already watch that Twinder Swindling documentary on Netflix, but it's a fantastic example of the lengths that these con artists actually go to get you into this. They can go as far as creating false websites before you even know them. So whenever you start doing your research, you might be thinking, you know what, I'm doing my due diligence. I'm gonna Google their name. I'm gonna see what they are. Well, guess what? They can potentially have already created those websites and what you're seeing, it's what they want you to see. They could be altering any information on the web. That documentary is fantastic because they show you how this guy actually even altered photos of himself with other people so that he created that image. He was portraying a person that never existed. So again, one, one very important thing that we have to keep in mind is that these guys are professional. They're con artists. They're very sophisticated with their scams. We might be thinking again, no, I know I can trust him because, you know, I talked to him and he showed me this and he showed me that. Or he, we went together and we saw this and we saw that. Well, not really. You have to really be aware that basically anything could be faked. So make sure that you know who you're talking to. Now, on top of that, when you are in a relationship or when you are starting a relationship, there is a factor that also comes in play. I don't know if you heard about that term love brain, but if you haven't, we're gonna listen about it from a specialist here. I have a video that I wanna share with you. It's just gonna be a minute or two. Brainwashing might not actually be far off. Helen Fisher is an anthropologist at Rutgers University in New Jersey. She studies the science behind falling in love and how it can affect the brain. We were looking at the first picture of the brain and you see that red line. We're looking at a composite of 15 people who have just fallen madly and happily in love. Fisher put more than 100 people in love through MRI brain scanners she wanted to see how their brains differed from those who weren't in love. We now have uh, data that actually, when you're madly in love, not only are you feeling all that energy, euphoria, focus, motivation, but activity in a certain little factory in the front of the brain linked with decision-making and planning begins to reduce its activity. So you're really not thinking as clearly. She also noticed that activity in another part of the brain slows down when you're falling head over heels in love. This is important for fraud. This brain region in blue near the front of the brain is a brain region associated with negativity bias. We are built to remember the negative. But when you're madly in love, activity in this brain region reduces. And so you can overlook the negative. You can deceive yourself. You can deceive yourself, right? That's why when you're in love, there's nothing wrong that that person can do, right? Other people can see it clearly, 
but you can't because you're in love. So this is something that is a fact. It's it's science already proving that. So we have to be aware that Brain they water. actually um, use this against us. Um, again, one more time, I have to say this very, very often. These are professional people. They're trying to seduce you with things that are believable enough, but it's so, but just too good to be true. Going back to the example of that documentary, uh, for the ones that have already watched it, the first date they have, it's just crazy, right? That's how he gets all, all, the, all the women to believe into he's a billionaire. Like they go through this amazing date and there's a private yet and then they go everywhere and he shows them, he shows them how uh, rich he is and all that. So it's something that you're actually seeing, but it's actually all fake. It's, it's staged, right? So he is presenting this believable up to a point, but still at the same time, too good to be true. Now, they create this false persona and they build a relationship. Um, they sometimes uh, can take some time to take the, uh, to to build your trust. Again, taking that uh, example, they he takes a few months to actually get into that point where he is comfortable. When he already brainwashed the the person that he was talking to into believing that they are in a relationship, even if they haven't been that much in a relationship and it has been really fast. The, another thing they do quite often the, these people is that they make promises for the future, right? Uh, and in this case, they were already talking about moving together, and this happened within a month or less. Uh, and everything seems super perfect, super super perfect. But one thing that you will definitely see coming is that they will start asking for money one way or the other. It could be that maybe their mom got sick and they need money for their mom or a brother, or they might need money for um, a ticket maybe to see you. Maybe they're not in the same city that you are. They want to come meet you while well, they need money for that air airplane ticket. Or like in this case, he built up this persona and he was telling people that he was being chased, that he had enemies coming after him and that his funds were caught and he needed some kind of assistance. At that point, you might be already invested in a relationship that doesn't exist. Therefore, you'd be more than happy to actually provide those funds, right? At that point, it's not a he problem or she problem. It's an us problem. And that's when the situation comes. That's when people start losing their money. So it's very unfortunate. So does that mean that we can do nothing uh, against this? Does that mean that there's nothing else or can we trust no one? No, not really. There are a few red flags that we can watch for before we continue engaging in this. Now, the, before, uh, before we go into that, the risk of missing the red flags is crazy. We have monetary losses, debt, emotional scars, even death. I have a, an example here that I'm gonna be showing you in a few minutes um, where the, the person lost almost $2 million in one scam. It's the costliest exam in Canada, scam in Canada. So it can happen to anyone. And one of the things is that whenever we actually fall victim of these scams, we feel like we cannot talk to anyone. We don't even want to say it, right? We feel ashamed. That's why only percent of the victims actually talk to the authorities about it. And unfortunately, when it comes to that point, getting those funds back, it's very, very hard because they have already been wired to another country potentially uh, or another institution and it's very hard to get. But one thing that we have to remember is that the victim is not at fault. These people are professionals. They created this file thinking that you, they, they are gonna show you what you wanna see. We were having this conversation in the office a few minutes ago about who's, uh, like how is the victim really to, 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 to be blamed, right? Like is the victim, does the victim have any blame on this? Not really, because what we were saying is that the person that put that profile, they have already studied uh, the behavior and the, the needs and wants of a certain audience. And you if you're a victim, you're part of that audience. So you don't have to feel bad about it. It's very similar to what companies do, right? In the real marketing. They study an audience and they present you with what you want to see and what you want to hear. And it's just human nature that you're going to say, yes, that's exactly what I want to see. 
For example, the ladies in that documentary, well, come on, who doesn't want to be dealing with a billionaire, right? Who doesn't want to be uh, living the high life in private jets? We all want to live that way. So what he did was just creating a way so that they would believe that lie and then unfortunately get them to that uh, point where they can be, where they trust him enough that they would be able to give him money. Now, the, the very unfortunate part about that is that they don't stop with the money that you have. They will keep on pushing to get as much money as you can, as they can from you. And that tends to even go as far as, you know, leaving an emotional, emotional scar, get you bankrupt on, or even make you feel like you want to kill yourself. So don't, don't, if at any point you feel like you know someone that's going through this, um, just support them. Or if you have known someone that has, has been a victim already, um, this would be a, a good point to empathize with them and uh, just let them know that it's not their fault. It's definitely never the victim's fault. So talking about the costliest scam, here it is. This is the video that I want to share with you. And let's see how that happened. Among the emails, this one stood out, detailing the highest losses we'd ever seen. It was from a divorced mother of two from the Toronto area who asked us to alter her appearance. We're calling her Kelly. I'm ashamed of myself and what other people think of me. Not many people know what happened to me, but I hurt a lot of people especially my family. <laughs> yeah. And I wrecked my life, but I have nothing. I have nothing to show for it, except that I'm alive. Like all the others, Kelly reached out after watching this. The Invisible Man, W5's recent investigation into the shadowy world of internet romance scammers. The story focused on Colleen, a woman from British Columbia who died by suicide after being left destitute in an elaborate scam that had her believing she was about to be arrested. Her sister, Karen Ringham, shared Colleen's suicide note, which described feeling terrified, abused, and terrorized for 22 months. This invisible man <laughs> took everything that she had worked for her family, her friends, her home, and he also took her life. I watched it and it really, it really hit home. What is it about Colleen's story that resonated with you? I had thoughts. I had thoughts of doing what Colleen had done, but I couldn't, I couldn't for my kids. You actually thought about taking your life? A few times. A few times. Kelly watched Colleen's story in horror because it played out so much like her own. Both women had met the love of their life online. Before her death by suicide, Colleen sold everything she owned to pay a never-ending demand for money, one million dollars in total. Kelly made it out alive, but was conned out of even more money. I just wanted a person to spend some time with in my life. And it was around Valentine's Day. And um, I got a message from this, uh, this man. And uh, he instantly, you know, he sent me a couple messages on there and, you know, said I was beautiful and I felt special. Whoever was scamming Kelly used this picture and pretended to be a man named Greg. He said he worked for defense company Lockheed Martin in Toronto. He said he traveled the world on top secret missions and he showered Kelly with love, calling her gorgeous, promising to surrender his world to her and make her happy beyond her wildest dreams. I'm not trying to feel sorry for myself, but you know, I've been through a, a lot of things in my life. And I thought, you know, it's time for me now. Soon after their online relationship began, they started planning a life together. What did you envision was going to happen with the two of you? He was going to retire and we'd have a life together. I was buying into the dream. He was very good at convincing me of things. Uh, he was even asking, oh, what kind of house will we get? 
he was always on Kelly's mind. She was swept up in a whirlwind romance with a world traveler promising a future together. But soon, it spiraled out of control. You've kept uh, every document over this 16-month mm -hmm. nightmare. Yeah. Kelly meticulously kept evidence of the online relationship that led to her ruin. Every document, every dollar, every promise, all the heartache. So you've made a spreadsheet that documents every single transaction. Greg said he could never meet in person because he was traveling for work. And then one day, three months after their online relationship began, Greg sent Kelly this email with a copy of his father's will. He claimed he had been left an estate worth more than seven and a half million dollars. But as always in scams like these, there was a big catch. I woke up one morning, Greg sent me a message and he said, can you help me? What did he need help with? It started out maybe a couple thousand dollars that we need to apply for this type of license. Money that was needed, Kelly was told, for taxes and to release Greg's substantial inheritance. Kelly was sent official looking documents and receipts and then requests for more money. $15,000 for an application to release the estate, $2,700 for a legal retainer fee. The costs kept piling up. He's telling you that you're going to get all of this money back. Don't worry. It's going to be just oh, a few Oh, yeah, weeks. in a couple weeks. In a couple weeks, it's all going to be repaid. As proof, Greg set Kelly up with this online bank account where she could log in and see all the money that she was sending from Canada. You're looking at this bank account with your name on it and all this money beside it. They gave me the account number, uh, my name on it, my address, um, the amount of the estate and how much money I had had sent. Not realizing that the bank account was a fake, Kelly agreed to send yet another payment and it was massive. She was told she had to pay 5% of the value of the estate nearly $400,000 to have the inheritance transferred to Canada. What started as a few thousand dollars mm -hmm. ballooned into an extraordinary amount. Yeah, I had no debt, but I ended up clearing out my, um, taking money out of my RESPs, RRSPs, cashing them in. I had to mortgage my cottage and my house. Kelly eventually ended up having to sell both her home and cottage. Her bank account was almost completely drained. The full amount, right there in black and white on her financial ledger, is staggering. The cost of this scam is closer to $2 million. Crazy, right? But we see a trend here. This person, everything's looking good and dandy. That's what she wants to hear. That's what she wanted to, to, to listen to. There's going to be promises of a life together, and then something happens. And when that something happens, they start needing money. Among the and they won't stop until they actually get you. So uh, we have a couple more polls here that I would like to share with you and see your thoughts. So, Cindy, if you don't mind pulling the first one. So let's see how many of you have actually been involved in any of these scams or have heard about anyone that actually gone through these scams. Wow, so almost half of you have heard about someone that has been a part of these scams. That's really sad. Um, does anyone have a story that maybe they want to share with us or any other um, comment that maybe you want to share? I do. Perfect, Maria. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, well, actually, it didn't happen to me, um, but it did happen to a very close friend of mine. And um, kind of just like the story you're telling, it's a long game. And, you know, the, the romances go on for months and months and months. And, you know, in a lot of cases, it seems too good to be true. And, um, and yeah, and, it, and when, it, 
when it comes to the, you know, factors of the heart or, and all those other things, we all want love. And so, and I've seen, you know, personally how, um, you know, my friend was able to, to fall in love very quickly and everything was, you know, on board until it wasn't. And, uh, and it's very, very devastating, but the telltale signs was, you know, you never want to be on video. Everything is done on text or, or just through voice messages and you're not really seeing this person's face or where they live or visiting. And, um, and yeah, and that's really what happened to my friend. And unfortunately, you know, his feelings were hurt and, and all those things, but yeah, you know, when you're pinching yourself and being like, is this too good to be true? Most of the time it is. And at one point, someone's always asking for money. So yeah, that's just a telltale sign, but it, it, it's happened actually quite a bit in my circles and um, this is real. And so anyway, like I said, if, if you can't have the opportunity to meet in person and everything's done online, just be a little weary of it. Red flag, 100%. Thank you very Sorry, much. Thank for you, sharing Sergio. That. Yeah, another thing that I like that you touch base on is that this is real. This is happening everywhere. We actually here in the office at BBB, we have... Um, Unfortunately, um, you know, or fortunately, the opportunity to meet someone who actually went through these. And um, this person also lost $800,000 out of these scams. Now, her scam was a little bit different from the ones that we've seen, but they have the same theme. At the end of the day, they start asking for money, right? And that's the, that's the point where you need to double check and maybe think again. Uh, for example, the first ones that we were discussing, that Tinder Swindler example, where everything's so perfect, but it's moving so fast. Think about it. This person still a stranger. Why would you give money to a stranger, even if they have already taken you to a date and the date was great? Still a stranger. And after a few months even of this uh, relationship, have you actually met that person? Maybe you haven't. Then technically... That person doesn't exist. I know it's very easy to say right now, because as we said before, we're not in that love brain situation. But that's why we start, we have to analyze this before this happens and talk to as many people as we can. Because once you're in that love brain situation, it's a lot, a lot harder to be aware that this is happening. And that's why these people keep on sending that money. Because they, they want to continue believing that, no, 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 I'm not going to see the negatives. This person is definitely going to give my money back. Whatever they send me, I'm going to believe on it. And that's why they, until they, it, it hits rock bottom. So, yeah, thank you for that. Any other comment, any other story that maybe anyone wants to share, Danielle? I was just going to say, um, we're hearing a lot. And the reason we asked to do this presentation, actually, it's happening to older adults a lot, especially with isolation in the pandemic. So we heard of one instance of someone who met a gentleman online and didn't know anything about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, but he was able to walk her through the steps of sending him hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of of Bitcoin. And it was a romance scam. And those are, we hear about those all the time as well. So yeah, hundred percent. They're combined. Um, that's exactly the example of the lady that was here with us. Uh, she got to a point where the relationship was, she was comfortable enough talking about investments. And this person asked her to start investing on this Bitcoin. Um, as you know, investments are investments and um, the different channels are for different people, depending on, on your comfort level. But if you are going to be investing in a cryptocurrency, you have to know what you're getting into. Because sometimes they say it's a cryptocurrency, but it's not even a cryptocurrency. It's just a scam. Or sometimes they do get into that cryptocurrency, but that cryptocurrency doesn't even work like a cryptocurrency. So this is, they're taking advantage of the, um, relate, the, the unknown of this investment and because it's trendy it's easier to get people convinced into into getting into it but yeah it's very sad when they're combined and unfortunately when that that kicks in it's a lot more complex so thank you for sharing danielle and um thank you marie as well we just want to be aware of these red flags and hopefully we can assist someone that um maybe it's going through something like this or prevent it now 
that's not the only scam that that's the scam that we're here to talk about however all the other scams share the same um, recurring uh, traits for example they usually have a quick call to action they have an emotional diversion and they're designed to keep you off balance the roman scam is similar but it's uh it adds as well that component of the relationship but in any other scam you're going to find the same situation they're not one they they're not going to want you to think twice about what you're doing they want to have you do whatever you need to do right away anyone can be vulnerable fraud especially as you were mentioning danielle with seniors we see that fraud is the number one crime against them so it's very very unfortunate when we see anyone fall in prey of any type of scam now the most common scams affecting seniors these days are tech support scams phishing Smishing, which is the text messaging that you probably all of you are accustomed to by now, where you're getting that text message from your account with Netflix saying that it got locked and you don't even have Netflix or, you know, your bank has been compromised and you don't even deal with that bank. Anything like that, they ask you to click over here. Do not click over there. If at any point in time you feel like, oh, maybe my bank is actually locked, go directly to the website or contact the, your agent or anyone that you're comfortable with in that um, you know area. Shortened website, of course. Uh, again, they're just trying to get you to click there. Tax scams um, with you know uh, with um, any kind of payments or repayments that they will ask. Ransomware, sweep, uh, sweepstakes scams, and Roman scams. Again, yeah, you like you were saying, Danielle. Roman scams is one of those areas that it's definitely affecting seniors, and it's uh, unfortunately becoming more and more prevalent. So on, a, on an overall perspective, how can you avoid feel, feel, falling prey of scams? Um, you know, definitely one of the areas where they will use to try to get your information is through your computer. So safeguard your computer. When you are not with your computer, uh, when you're away from it, just make sure that you lock it, that you have a password. Passwords for anywhere that you're logging in, I know they can be a pain. I know it's a lot easier if you have one password for everything, but guess what? That's what scammers like. So try to make sure that you have a password, a different password for anywhere else that you want to log in into. And as you know, uh, good examples of passwords uh, contain uh, some of these uh, examples here. They contain an uppercase, a lowercase, numbers, special characters, at least three of them. And of course, nothing about you personally, because um, scammers will also use that for trying to access other areas. Again, uh, how to avoid falling prey of scam. Uh, look before you click. Uh, again, one of those things that I say quite often is that um, we, it, all it takes is one minute when you're not paying 100% of your attention and you can fall prey. Um, one of those text messages one day, uh, they were telling me about, um, it, it was about an Amazon thing that I ordered. And actually I had ordered something and I was waiting for it. So when I got the text, I was like almost ready to click on it. And then I stopped myself and I was like, no, they don't communicate through text. They do it through email. So I, I stopped myself, but it, I was this close. So like I said, everybody can't fall prey of that. So just make sure that before you click into that, if before you click into anything, just think twice. Uh, if you're on your computer, you can hover around the link. If you're unaware or for, for what where that link is gonna take you. And if you hover around, it's actually gonna show you the full link then you will be able to, exam, uh, to examine and make sure that you're actually going to the right site. Um, of course, if you are in a public place, be aware of suspicious activity around you. If there's anyone trying to look over your shoulder or, or anything like that, go directly to websites. As we were saying before, if at any point in time you do feel that maybe your Netflix account might be locked or your bank account might be locked, don't go into uh, generic um, links go directly to the website. And definitely do not use phone numbers or emails provided through another email. For example, that um, Nigerian prince, right? That's trying to give you that all that money. And he gives you a phone number for the government for you to confirm. Of course, if you use that number that he's giving you, he's gonna have one of his fellas ready to pick up that call and pretend to be whomever. 
So never use those phones. Go directly to the place that you that you know and trust. And be careful on what you download. Do not open any email attachment from anyone that you don't know. Keep also your system up to date. Um, as you know, the hackers and the people in technology are trying to keep us safe, but they're also, the hackers are trying to break that safety. So it's like a cat and mouse game. Once One time they're advanced, the other time they catch up and so on and so forth. So the only way for you to be safe is that you keep yourself up to date with updates. Otherwise, you might be left behind and that's where the, uh, where the hackers can get you. Have a trustworthy antivirus and have backups. And this is good for anything. Like, you know, computers are not made to last forever. So in order to protect your information, it's always good to have a backup. Another thing that we offer is that uh, we have a scam tracker. It's a specific area on our website where you can search online and see if there has been any scam attempts in the past. Um, so for example, if you get a phone call from this number, you can come to our scam tracker and look for it. Or if there's a person asking you to buy a puppy or whatever, you can come to our scam tracker and you will see if this is a scam already. And if you know that you're trying to be scammed and it's not reported yet, you can report a scam. This is the best way that we have to fight back. As mo the more people that know that this is a scam, the less money they will be making and therefore the less um, profitable and they will stop doing that hopefully. So you can reckon, this is the, the best way to recognize uh, scam attempts. Um, if you know for sure that uh, it is a scam, tell, call the police. Yeah, of course, if there's any danger to yourself or a loved one, um, every now and then the scammers um, tend to escalate situations. They might even try to threaten you. Sometimes they say, oh yeah, I'm gonna get the cops and whatnot. Sometimes they're like, I know where you live. If you feel like that's actually true, that they do they do know where you live and, and there's a situation that might be escalating any further, do not follow with what they're asking you. Instead, hang up and call the police. And absolutely never ever give or send any personable, uh, personally identifiable information, um, your social insurance number, uh, your passport, anything like that. Uh, if you send money, jewelry, gift cards, checks, or wire information, then you're probably at a loss at that point. So make sure that you know where you're sending all that information. Otherwise it can be used against you. So that's how we can protect ourselves. But what happens if we already made a mistake? You know, we have already been a victim of a scam. It is what it is, we're humans. The first thing that you need to do, if it involves your bank account, notify your credit agencies and contact your bank right away so that they can stop from uh, the scammers from taking any more money from you. Uh, if it came from your computer, update your software, report the, uh, the incident to the authorities. And one thing that most people tend to forget is that you need to be proactive to make sure that nothing else is going to happen uh, for a little while. Sometimes uh, we might think that, you know, this happened a month ago, then it might be over by now. No, you have to be diligent into checking that nothing else will be happening for at least six months. We recommend even a year would be more than enough. So how do you do that? Maybe checking your credit score consistently so that you know that no one else is trying to use your information to open other accounts or any other credit under your name. Now, you are not alone. There are so many institutions that can help you if you have been a victim of a scam. You can contact financial, your financial institution. If there's any regulatory body, uh, of course, uh, depending where you're located, there might be an RCMP or a cybercrime unit. Um, we have one here in Calgary uh, with the police that can help. Of course, us at the Better Business Bureau. Uh, we also have the Office of the Information and Privacy Commissioner of Alberta and the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity. So uh, as I was saying before, we're humans. So we understand that we're gonna be making mistakes and that's not the end of the world. We made a mistake, but the most important thing about that mistake is that you acknowledge it instantly, correct it and learn from it. We love that quote from Stephen Covey and I feel like that's the best way to, to go from it. I know that with scams and even worse with Roman scams, there's always that stigma that, you know, I was a victim, I am the one to blame, I was duped 
Well, you know what? Don't feel like that. It was not your fault. Again, these people are professionals. And the more we talk about this, the less they will be able to do it to other people. It takes a lot of courage that I admire those people that went into that documentary and also this lady that talked to the news because they are able to help us learn from their mistakes. Having said that, is there any other questions, any comments, any stories that you want to share? This is an interactive uh, area and it's a safe space. So by all means, please let us know now that we're here, uh, if there's anything that we can help you with or any other stories. You can type your comments in the chat or unmute and we're a small group. If you want to raise your hand, you can. This is a great opportunity to ask Sergio about any scams or frauds. He's the expert. So anything you've ever wanted to know. In the meantime, I'm gonna share another scam that happened to my wife. Uh, she'd probably be thinking that I'm picking on her, but unfortunately on this one, she actually fell prey of that. So how, how it happened is that she was contacted again through social media. And this was a business, right? So this business was trying to look for models and look for spoke people for their brand. And she contacted her and they contacted her and they were like, you know what? We have chosen you because we think that you would be a great fit for our organization. Uh, we're going to be sending you this package so that you can take a look at it. It has some of our products. The only thing you need to do is pay for the shipping. It's only $14. So she thought, yeah, that makes sense. And she didn't even think uh, that long, right? It was just, you know, $15. You don't second guess $15. So you were like, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. Okay, go. And then she, after she paid, she started thinking, but who are they? Let's take a, a closer look at them. And then that's when she realized that they have quite a few other reviews about people that were already scammed. So as I was saying before, these scams can be as little as $15. They're looking for volume or they can be as high as $2 million, depending on what they're looking for. So we just have to have our eyes open. Now I see there's a hand uh, over there, Charlene. Do you wanna share a comment here with us? Uh, yeah, I actually have a couple of questions for you, Sergio, and thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, the first question that I have is, um, so I work with uh, older adults and mm -hmm. Sadly, the reason I work with them is because they have fallen victim to uh, elder abuse, some form of elder abuse. Financial abuse is, is um, quite prevalent with the number of people that we talk to, but keeping in mind that frauds are a little bit different than, than financial abuse. But I do have conversations with um, people who have fallen victim to romance scams or to scammers. And, and I find it, uh, I wonder if you have any tips for those of us who work with people who we see are, are getting deeper and deeper into the relationship and falling uh, even further behind in, in, with financial losses and they just don't want to listen to the reality of it. And, and as a support worker, I, I sometimes worry that by pushing the conversation too much, I lose my, I lose my relationship with the older client. And I don't want to do that because I could potentially be the only one for them to go come to when everything falls apart for them. So do you have any tips on how we have, uh, matter of fact conversations with people who we see are entering into these kinds of scams, but balancing it with the with our are not wanting to lose the relationship with the victim. Does that make sense? <laughs> hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing. You're in a very complex situation. I totally see where you're coming from. Absolutely. The easiest way or the the most common way would be confronting them and letting them know, no, you're wrong. Make sure that you know what you're doing. But you're absolutely right. When you do that, you can you run the risk of alienating them, right? And what they're going to do is that they're going to just turn around and they will continue. So yes, you're reaching them in a very tough spot because they are already on, on that law brain, right? So they don't want to listen. They're already trying to find excuses uh, to continue with the behavior that they're going into. Uh, the 
the only way for um, someone to actually stop that behavior at that point is by them opening their eyes on their own. And unfortunately, it's not as simple as that, right? So the only suggestion that I have is to challenge them in a different way. For example, uh, what we encounter in the past is that people have realized that this is a scam when they start thinking the opposite. Like, does this really make sense, right? Is this person really making that much profit on this investment? Do you know any other investments that are making that profit? Trying to ask them more questions so that they can open their eyes on their own. Because if you confront them and they and you say to them right away, you know what, you're sending that money and you're never going to lose that. And you're never going to see that money again. It's going to be lost. It's wrong. Then they're going to shut down because they, they don't want to feel like they're they're at wrong. But if they open their eyes on their own, um, that'd be the only way for them to stop. It's very tough. It really depends on the situation. But uh, the only suggestion that I have would be challenge them with, with inquiries. I know hopefully if they're still um, you know, uh, receptive, they, they, they might be able to open their eyes on, on, on their side. That makes sense. Thank you very much. And the second question I have is, there are, there's a tremendous amount of information out there, or there seems to be a tremendous amount of information out there warning people against scams. And yet we continue to see a growing number of people who are victimized by it. Do you have any tips for us as community members and people who are in uh, support worker roles or just people in community, how we can better get the message across to people and educate them? Because we there's, there's no, there's no shortage of information out there. It just doesn't seem to be getting to the to the right people. Wow, yeah, you're absolutely right. And thank you again for bringing that up. Yes, we hear this all the time, right? Scam here, scam there, and then they still continue to be successful. Why? I guess because we're not learning from our mistakes. So the best uh, advice would be sharing uh, and continue communicating. That's why I like sharing my own examples. Because, uh, you know, it's not that we're all almighty and we cannot fall. That, that's what I like to say in every single one of my presentations. Anyone is at risk. And why is everyone at risk? Because you're going to be bombarded with this information. As much information as there is, there's 10, 10 times more scams. And they're getting more sophisticated and more developed as we go. Right. For example, that Tinder swindler guy, his level of sophistication is out of this world. Like having videos already preset, having these people already working for him and all this money that he's investing into this staging, it's crazy. That's something that I haven't even heard before, but uh, this will continue to happen. So the best way that you can actually make an impact, again, I, I suggest that whenever you have the chance to speak to someone, do so and do it in a conversational way. Um, uh, again, sharing experiences. And we are always learning as well here at the BBB. Every time that we have uh, presentations like this one, we, we love them because we're also learning about what's going on out there. Um, we, have even, we have even instances where we have received scam calls while we're having these presentations or people uh, on the attendance have, have received those uh, phone calls and they're like, hey, I'm getting a call right now. What should I do? Just just hang up and block them. Don't spend your time with these guys, right? But um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, as, as long as they can continue making a profit, they will continue to be there. So uh, we can do a little bit by affecting or uh, by improving uh, the people that we touch and hopefully that people can continue spreading the word. Thank you, Charlene. Any other comment, any other question, any, any other story that you wanna share? Can I put you on the spot, uh, Danielle, since you're already there? Yep. Have you ever been a victim of a scam or have you ever been close to it? You know, I don't think so. I'm one of those people who thinks I'm too smart. But, you know, it, I think the biggest one that happens to me is um, because I use Instagram a lot and I enter contests on Instagram. And what happens is you enter and then a scam account that's pretending to be the business will contact you and say, oh, you've won. You just need to send us your credit card information so we can ship you the, the prize. So 
that's probably the closest. I've never fallen for it, but you sure, know, there's sure. a lot. And <laughs> one we're hearing a lot about right now, especially in Calgary, I'm sure you guys are hearing too, is a rise in grandparent scams. Mm -hmm. So that's when someone calls um, an older adult and says, um, it's me, your grandson. And they'll say like, oh, Sam. And they're like, yes, Sam, it's Sam. And then ask them for money, say they're in trouble, say they're hurt, say they need money. So um, that's another one that I know CPS right now is trying to make people aware of because that's been a big problem. So mm -hmm. yeah, hundred percent. Well, thank you for sharing. I'm happy that you've never been that close. Just keep it that way because you're going to continue <laughs> to be contacted. But yeah, that grandparent scam, absolutely. We have heard about it and we're trying to also continue uh, notifying people. It's very tough, right? Because again, it shares the same characteristics of any scam. There, It's a quick call to action. They won't let you double double think about it. They will ask They will ask you to send money right away because I'm in prison or, not, or I had an accident and I, I really need that money now. Save me, grandpa. And you, of course, want to save one of your family members and you send the money and it's gone so yeah let's see there's a couple questions here emails are getting dangerously close and looking very authentic my husband has always told me to check the email address before you can go who's from there yeah absolutely you know what email addresses or emails are getting very uh, interesting as well because what we've seen there's a trend uh, of uh, hackers that they will hack into an account and they win, they won't act right away. They will wait. They will see how the communication is going and they will wait for the right time to try to attack. For example, our CEO email was hacked uh, six months ago or something like that. And then there was no activity until at one point they knew that we, we were going to have a meeting or something. And that's when they were starting asking for information and, and other stuff like that. So these people are very, very smart and they're getting more, um, you know, sophisticated. From your supervisors. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, they look accurately. Yeah, to totally, Cindy. Uh, they, they may have all that information. Yeah. So working for the government too, we've been warned many times that if we receive a email from the premier asking us to do something for him, it's it's not the premier. <laughs> so uh, Charlene has her hand up, it looks like. Well, I just I find this topic so interesting and it's so timely and there's so much of this going on, but I'm wondering, do you do you are you aware of a breakdown in statistics between uh, females and males who fall victim to romance scans because I'm seeing, I'm seeing a bit of a trend uh, in, for gentlemen uh, reporting uh, being victimized uh, through scams, but I'm not necessarily romance scams. I'm just wondering if, if you see any, uh, you know, a, a difference between the two genders. That's a great question. I don't have the data here with me, but I'm going to take that away. And I'm gonna look into it because yeah, that's very very interesting. We tend to see more males, uh, but I, I don't I don't have the actual ratio. Um, I'll take that question away and I'll, I'll get back to you, Shirley. That's very very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Does anyone else have any questions for Sergio? Okay. Awesome. Sergio, thank you so much. This was a great presentation. I loved all the graphics. It was very engaging. Um, I just want to let everyone that's still here know that we have a group on CORE Alberta called Alder Abuse. Um, Alder Abuse. I can't remember the name of the group. If you look, it says Elder Abuse. Core Elder <laughs> Abuse Group. Core <laughs> Elder Abuse Group. That's all it is. Thank you. Um, you're welcome to join that if you would like to continue the important conversations about things surrounding older adults and elder abuse. You can join the Core platform for free and become a member where you can find resources, information about events like this or other programs that might interest you. Um, the platform the platform is very easy to use and once you log up you have access to all those groups. Um, if you have any questions or comments 
related to CORE or the CORE group, you can direct them to healthyaging at calgaryunitedway.org. You'll see the email in the chat there. And then finally, I just want to welcome you to please take the event survey that we'll be sending out after um, we close today. It's a short survey that we hope you're able to take a few minutes to complete. It'll really help us gain insight into the event and how you felt participating. We can share that with our presenter as well. Um, and then that just helps us do even more for future events. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Thank you again, Sergio, for your time and expertise. And with that, I think we can come wrap it up. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for their attention and uh, hopefully I'll see you around. <laughs>